Okay, let's. <laughs> you can start the intro. <laughs> Sorry, I was being monotonous and muffled, but uh, you don't know what to say, right? It's crazy. Person saying Kaddish? Yeah, based on Greenberg, that's Moose's father, L.A. Greenberg. Oh, I didn't know who that was. I yeah, know was. he lives in Costa Rica. When he retired, but he, he's had this, he, Soros, you don't know from Soros that he's had, but he, he's living in Costa Rica. So that, now he doesn't know what he's supposed to do. He's got <laughs> life has changed now all of a sudden. So, but I wanted to didn't go to that. Okay, so then uh, today's Shirley, my name is Russ <laughs> Ellie Greenberg. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Good morning. Bechav um, Big Al. Uh, today's daf is Yevamos Mem Gimel. We are going to start at the uh, <clears throat> at the, toward the bottom of Mem Beis Amud Beis. We're not going to get quite as far as I want, but we will round the corner to Mem Dalad Amud Okay, we are six lines up from the bottom. Mistamech ve'azo Rabbi Avo akasve de Rabbi Nachum Shemai. So Rabbi Avo was leaning on the shoulder of uh, Rabbi Nachum, his servant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and Rabbi Nachum was taking the opportunity to grab some halachic wisdom from Rabbi Avo. And he asked him the following question. If you have a Mishnah that presents a machlokis, followed by a generic unattributed statement, what's the halacha? Amalei halacha kistam. Says the halacha in that case, where the machlok is first, is like the stam opinion in the Mishnah. Stam b'achagach machlokas. However, what if you have an unattributed opinion followed by a machlokas? My, what's the halacha there? Amar le, ain't halacha kistam. In that instance, the halacha is not like the stam opinion, the um, <clears throat> the unattributed opinion in the Mishnah. Stam ed mas nisin umachlokas bebrisa my. What happens if you have a stam Mishnah? But a machlokis on a similar topic in the brisa, Amar le halacha kistam. Yeah. What happens if you have a machlokis be masnisin be stamen be brisa? What if you have a machlokis in a mishnah? But in the brisa, you have a stam statement. What's the my? What's the halacha? Amar le top of mem gimel amar aleph v'chi rebbe lo shana v'chi aminayim lo. And if rebbe, who of course redacted the mishnah, didn't bring a uh, a stam mishnah, then why Rebbe Chia, who was his Talmud, if you look at the Rashi second line, Talmud, uh, Rebbe Chia Talmido, lo kamosa, Rebbe Chia put together all the brises, right. but if Rebbe didn't find reason to make it the halacha, what are we, kind of, what we, what are we looking at the brises for? Amar lay, so this is now, uh, this is Rebbe Nachum asking Rebbe Avo the following kasha, v'hatzinan, we have a Mishnah in Kalim, Masrik shal pishtan, a comb that is used to comb flax, shenit lushinav, that one of it, that its teeth were removed, v'nishtayruboshtayim, tameos. As long as there were two teeth still left in the comb, it's tame, because it has a shame kli, v'achas tahora. However, if there's only one remaining, it is tahor, because it can no longer be used for its original purpose. V'chulat shenit luachas achas v'fneyatsman, tameos. And all of these individual teeth that were removed one by one, each one of them, has some sort of use, and therefore the teeth themselves can be tameos. Sheltzemer, what if you have a comb that is used to comb wool? Shenit lushinav, achas mi time. What if every other tooth of all of the teeth in the comb uh, was removed? Tahor, said it's tahor because it can no longer work uh, as it's, uh, it can no longer work as a comb for wool. For wool. Nishtai Rubosh Shalosh. What if there are three teeth left? The Makomechad, all in one place, all together. Tame. So then it is Tame. However, Haisa Hachitsona Achas Mehen Tahor. But if the if one of the teeth that remained of the three was one of the two outermost teeth, mm -hmm. and those, I should have put a picture in the chat, the outermost teeth of these combs is connected to the handle, they're not removable. And because they're considerably wider, they don't perform the, the combing Srika. as well. Srika, thank you. And therefore, it is tahor. Nit lushnaiv asan memelakit. What if you took two of them and you made like a, a tweezers? Tameos. So then they're tame because it's become a kli. Achas v'hitkino What if you took out one and you prepared it to clean out a candle? Olamituach. 
or you uh, you prepared it to be some sort of a peg or a hook to maya. So in that case, because you were masaking it to have a, a, a purpose and a therefore a shame kli, it is tame. The Kaimalan, and this is the end of his question, Dein Halacha Kaosa Mishnah. This whole thing was a totally unattributed Stam Mishnah. And yet we know that the Halacha is not like this. So Amar Rabbi Avo says back to Rabbi Nachum, Amar Le Barmina. Okay, you're except for this one. So this is this is one is except for this. You found the exception. Congratulations. Is there a machlokas somewhere else about this? It's, it's not halakha, it's not like the stop, but is there a machlokas somewhere else? Uh, I don't know the answer. Okay. Well, he explains why. It's coming up? It's coming up. Okay, all right. Dahi de Rabbi Yochanan, Beresh Lakish Tamri Tavayu, Zu Eino Mishnah. And the reason that they don't consider. So, in, the answer to your question is I don't know, okay. but that might not be so relevant. Okay, got it. So, uh, Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Lakish both said the following about this Mishnah, just quoted by Rabbi Nachum. Mm -hmm. uh, my time is this not considered a Mishnah. I'm a Rabbi Nachum, 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 because the issue is that there are inconsistencies between the beginning of the Mishnah and the Seifa of the Mishnah as follows. Dikatani, Shalt Semer, Shinit Lushinav, Achazami Bein Taim Tahor. We said that in a comb that is used for wool, <clears throat> that if you took out every other of the teeth, every other tooth in the comb, it's tahor. That means that tame. But that means that if there are two left that are right that are adjacent to one another, that comb can still be tame. The hutter tani. But then we went and said lo. We said that if there are three left, it's tame. Well, that would indicate that three is tame, but two is not. So therefore, you seem to have an apparent contradiction within the Mishnah. Says the Gemara, my kusha. What, what are you talking about? That's not really a question. What question do you really have from there? What if the, the two that are tame are the two that are that are in interior and adjacent, and uh, the two that are tahor is where one of those two is on the outside? And we already said that doesn't work. Rather, no, this is the issue with the Mishnah. We said that when you take them out one at a time, they are tame because they're usable as they are. And even though you didn't do anything special to be metake that kli for use. However, we said if you take out one and you uh, and you and you prepare it to clean out a candle or to be used as a peg or a hook, to mea. Therefore, implying that hiskina in lo hiskina lo, that it's only valid if you specifically prepare it to be a to be a kli. Amar Abaye, my kusha. Once again, what 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 question are you really asking from there? I can draw a distinction between the cases. Maybe the ones that are that don't need to be prepared for a kli are pulled out of the comb already with with their base still attached. So they've got some kind of a handle yeah. and they can already be used as a kli. But the other one isn't removed with its base and it's impossible to use without doing anything further. Amar Papa, my kusha, and Papa gives a a separate but very similar answer to Abayi's. One, maybe one of them is very small. It doesn't have a handle on it. Maybe the other one is thicker and either has or doesn't need a handle on it and is therefore already ready for use. So therefore, this Mishnah still seems to stand on its own. We've just rebutted the two inconsistencies pointed out yeah. by the Gemara. Ella, what is the reason that according to Rabbi Yochanan and Rish Lakish, Zu Eino Mishnah, Rather, because those who are really experts and very cautious in their repetition of the Mishnah will say the following: Zu divrei Reb Shimon. It's a das yachid. It's not a stam Mishnah. So, because it's a das yachid, we don't automatically have to hold that way. Shalach Rabbi Chia Bar Avin, Rabbi Chia Bar Avin sent from you from Eretz Yisrael to Baba. Me'arsim toch shlosha that a woman who has just exited a previous marriage, can get engaged. She can enter Arison within three months. And that is how we act in practice. And similarly, Rabbi Elazar taught us in the name of Rabbi Hanina the Great. Rubo shall be shown. All you need to do is wait a majority of the first month. 
so let's say 15 point something days, Berubo shel shlishi, and a similar majority of the third month, the emsai shalin, and a full second month. So it comes to like just over two full months in total between those three uh, months long time periods. Meymar, surely, ares biyom tishu. Meymar, however, permitted the arusa to enter excuse me, permitted this, permitted this woman, we'll see whether it's an Arusa or Arusua, entered into Arusin on the 90th day. Amrali Ravashi Lea Meymar, Ravashi asks against Amemar's Psak, the Harabu Shemot, Amitar, and Shri Khalantin, Shalosh Khadash, Shalosh Khadash, and Chutzmium, Shemesbo, the Chutzmium, Shinis Arsabo. Didn't Rabbi Shmuel say that you need to wait three full months in addition to or in between the day that the first husband passed away and the day of Arusin? And therefore, how could she have gotten entered into Arisin on the 90th day? So I mean, my answers, that's not what Robin Shmuel were talking about. It wasn't the 30, it wasn't the 90 days, it wasn't the three months, it was Hahula Inin May Nekis Itmar. What he was really talking about, what Robin Shmuel were talking about, is about a woman who was nursing, Rabbi Shmuel Dami Tarvayu, because Robin Shmuel both said, that a woman who is nursing needs to wait 24 full months from the day ex, uh, between the birth and get, and uh, and her next erusin, with the exception of the day the baby's born. So Nietzsche, her count starts, her 24 month count starts the day after the baby is born, and 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 uh, cannot and must be 24 full months after that until she can be uh, nisaris until she can become engaged. Uh, so now we so that means that the original statement quoted by Amemar still stands. Aye, so we ask again, but don't we have a case where a woman or a man made a Sudas Erisin for his wife on her 90th day, meaning he didn't wait until the day after the 90th day, and Rafa wouldn't let him go through with the Erisin, and he forced him to, to lose out on everything he paid for his Suda. He lost the whole thing. Answers the Gemara, that was not a sudas erusin. That was a sudas nesuin, which must have come later. Why couldn't they just have said they were chaser in those months? They weren't thirty day months. I mean, that, that would have been the because <laughs> it didn't. That was too easy. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, let's but let's be honest. If I, I think of that answer, it's not a good one. I don't be honest. Know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> uh, that is your homework for today. Come back to my morning. Yeah, yeah. The Hilchasa, yeah. and now the Psak of the Gemara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like we said, yeah. in the name of Rav and Shmuel, uh, in the name of Rav and Shmuel, and she needs to wait 90 days. She needs to wait 90 days, excluding the day of her first husband's death mm -hmm. and excluding the day that she gets engaged. So so that's on the air. That's, we're not even talking about the day. So even we, the first opinion was just over two months, really. Uh, one month. And two right. Days. Clearly, that's the that's the make opinion. But we're going to see some super make opinions coming up. OK, so because the Arosin, I mean, you could still wait. You can, you can do Arosin and still wait to see if she's pregnant before she, you marry her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, actually, we saw those opinions yesterday. Right, right, we did. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the one month, the three days, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Chutz min ha'almana. So, might be handy to refer back briefly to the Mishnah at the bottom of Mem Amadala. Nope, just kidding. Mem Amadala. Mem Amadala. Look at the opinions of Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi, the very last two lines of the Gemara. Yeah. Rabbi Yehuda Omer. Hanestuos yis arsu, right. that a woman who is exiting a full marriage can get engaged whenever she wants. The ha'arusos yinasu, and the arusos can get married. Chutzmin arusos Okay, so according to Rabbi Huda, basically anybody can do whatever they want. A nesua can get engaged, and an arusa can get married. Rabbi Yossi Omer, and, and it is on Rabbi Yossi that we will focus most of the rest of our day today. Kol hanashim yis arsu, all of these women, whether it would seem whether Nesua or Arusa, can get engaged, chutz min ha'almana, except for an almana, and the reason is, because of her abeus. Okay, we now turn back to the Gemara by the two dots, ten lines up. Amar Rav Chista. Kal 
He says, I take issue with this whole waiting 30 days for the Avelis thing for a woman to get engaged. For a woman to get engaged, right? Because remember, Rabbi Yossi's opinion is Kalanashan Yisarsu, right? So Rav Chisa wants to know why in the world does she have to wait so long? Kalvachomer, he brings the following Kalvachomer. We have a case where it is also for her to do laundry, but she is mutter to, to uh, pursue a rusin, to become engaged. Wouldn't it follow that in a situation where she is allowed to do laundry, of course she can do, a, she can enter into a rusin. Now, Rashi tells us what the Gemara is about to, but it's worth seeing a couple of Rashis inside. The Makam Sha'asu Lechaves, Shabbos Shechal Tishabav Lios Besocha. This is Shua Shechalbo, Mutuli Ares. The Erisin Lab Simcha Ninhu, because Erisin, not such a Simcha. I mean, you're contractually obligated to eventually marry the guy, but Erisin's not such a Simcha. Makam Shemutu Lechaves, Tosh Shloshim Yom Shel Evel. Remember, for a husband, for a spouse, the availus is 30 days. Within those 30 days, she's allowed to do laundry. The Avel the, uh, the ain't Asur B'tichboset, Ela Shiva Yamim, the Shiva Yamim. It's only during Shiva that she's not allowed to do the laundry. The Choshelosh Yom Legeutz. So, okay, fine. So we'll leave the rest of that Rashi, right? About Kibbus low, but Kibbus, laundry is allowed after Shiva. So there's 23-ish days where she could conceivably pursue Averson. So now, Back to the Gemara, Maihi. What situation are we talking about? It's not following Mishnah and Tainus. Shabbos Shechal Tishabah B'Socha. Shabbos, the week in which Tishabah falls, Asr the Sapir Lechaves. You cannot get a haircut and you may not do laundry. Bacha Mishi Mutter. However, on Thursday, you are allowed to be Bnei Kavad Shabbos in order to properly honor the Shabbos. Vitanya, Kodem Azmanazeh. Before this time, and we'll see what that phrase means in a moment. Ha'am, the Ma'atim Be'izkeim, the, the Kla Yisrael, um, does a little bit less business, Melisa o Melita, and a little bit less buying and selling, Melivnos willing toa, and we do, and we we prevent people, we uh, we hold back from building and planting. Umarsin, however, we do allow people to uh, to uh, to go to through Averson about low konzi, but we do not permit nisuin. The Enos and Sudas Averson, but we do not allow a Suda. So we see from here that within the week of Tisha B'Av, Averson is permitted. So what in the world are we making this woman wait for a full Avelos? Because of the Kalba Chomer is from laundry. So if she can do laundry during her Shloshim, anytime after Shiva, then why are, and, and she's allowed to get engaged when she's not allowed to do laundry, then in this case here, why wouldn't Rabbi Yossi allow her to get engaged right away? What is this 30 days of evil? What are we waiting uh, Avelos for? What are we making her wait? So answers the Gemara, Kitan Yahi, Kodem de Kodem. Really, we're talking about the week before Shavua Shechalbo. Amarava, the Kodem de Kodem Nami, Kalva Chomer. But we have the same Kalva Chomer because that's still within Shloshim. And during that time period, you're not allowed to do business, but she is allowed to um, to get married, to uh, to enter Eresin. Then of course she should be allowed to do Averson. So again, the same caution on Rabbi Yossi's opinion from this Kalva Chomer. Why does Rabbi Yossi say that she needs to wait thirty days for Avelus? Lo tamed the Rabbi Yossi Omer Kolanashem Yis Arsu. So the Gemara now is going to amend Rabbi Yossi's statement in the Mishnah. Don't think that Rabbi Yossi was talking about all of these women are allowed to enter Averson. Ela ema Kolanashem Yinasu, but rather all of these women are allowed to get married. So he wasn't talking about uh, an almana entering Averson in those 30 days. He was talking about an almana getting married within those 30 days, which, every, which, which everybody agrees is, is going to be a problem. I believe everybody agrees. Okay, top of men gimel on the days. Uh, now the obvious question. No, well, we'll get to that. The obvious question is, isn't Rabbi Yossi concerned yeah. about this whole three-month thing oh. and figuring out the paternity of the child of this woman? So the Bach adds in, so one option is, no, he doesn't care. That's not a halacha. Don't worry about it. Go and be happy with your next husband. 
Levi Sema Le'olam Isle. Really, Rabbi Yossi is concerned about Havchana and, and, and being able to distinguish the, the, uh, the parenthood, the fatherhood of this child. The Eme Rabbi Yossi Omer. So let's say that Rabbi Yossi is defining his statement in the Mishnah and the Malaf and Aleph at the bottom as in a very specific case. Who is allowed to get married? Called Arusos Gerushos Yinasu. Only women who were divorced from a status of Arusin. They were never fully married. They were divorced. They've got to get from their Arus. That's the case where Rabbi Yossi says they are allowed to get married. Because there's no Yichud. Because there's no Yichud and because they're already divorced. So therefore, you're not worried about paternity because there's no pregnancy to worry about. Ihachi asks the Gemara, I know Rabbi Yehuda, because Rabbi Yehuda says that an Arusa is allowed to get married. So then if Rabbi Yossi's case is an Arusa, an Arusa Grusha in Achanami, but an Arusa to, to Nesuin, then what's Rabbi Yossi's Chiddush? Ikebenayu Nesua Li'ares. So the difference between them is a specific case of a woman who was fully, who was exiting a full marriage, who then wants to enter Arusin. According to Rabbi Yehuda, Savran Nesua Muteris Li'ares. Rabbi Yehuda says, according as it as is his wording in the Mishnah and the Malif, go right ahead. The Nesua is allowed to enter Arusin. Rabbi Yossi Savar, Nesua Asura Li'ares. Rabbi Yossi says, a Nesua is not permitted to Arusin. Take a look at the bottom half of a kind of a lengthy Rashi, uh, somewhat around midway down the page, the Dibur Hamaschil, is Ika Benayu Nesuli Aris. Look at the end of that Rashi. Ava Nesua Sloyis Arsu. But a Nesua should not be enter Erisin. Why? Because we do have some level of concern that maybe she is pregnant. The Isharis Le Lehis Ares, because Isharis Law. If we allow her to get engaged, Asila in Sube. Maybe she'll just go ahead and get married. And then we do have an issue a potential issue of a pregnancy to worry about. Yeah, but right now you may have a scripture on Yehuda, which it doesn't seem to be from the Mishnah. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Because the Gemara right now is going to go through various scenarios, and we're going to end up basically back where we started. Okay. This time, Rabbi Yossi, Nesua Asurli Ares. And does Rabbi Yossi, back in the Gemara, does Rabbi Yossi really hold that a Nesua is prohibited from entering Averson? Meaning, somebody who was a full Nesua, but is no longer. Rabbi Yossi says in a brisa, all women are allowed to enter Eresin, except for the Amana, like we said, because of the 30-day Avelus. And her Avelus is 30 days. And nobody is allowed to get married. The Chulan, again, a very inclusive term, None of them are allowed to get married until they've waited three months. Asks the Gemara on this brisa, on that interpretation of the brisa. Hi, my kusha. What kind of question are you asking me? Elaine with the Ketani Rabbi Yossi Omer, call on Ashimis Arsu. If you're asking me from the ratio of that brisa, where Rabbi Yossi says was quoted as saying, call on Ashimis Arsu mi alima mi mesnisa and do ukimne be arusos gerushos yinasu. Is that brisa? any stronger than our Mishnah. We already interpret Rabbi Yossi in our Mishnah and the Malaf yeah. is saying that we're referring specifically to an Arusa who's a Grusha. So why would you make the Brisa any more Hummer than the Mishnah? Just say and, re- and interpret it that he's talking about the same case. Hachanami, kol Arusos Grushos Yinasu. Rabbi Yossi must mean in that Brisa that all Arusos who, who got a get from their Arus, they are allowed to get married because of a, a lesser concern about pregnancy. Ella mi seifa, but rather maybe the question against Rabbi Yossi from this brisa is from the seifa of the brisa. The katani vechulan lo yinasu adchi yehula hen shlosha chadashi, that none of them is allowed to get married until they've waited a full three months. In suvehu delo, now they're not allowed to get married. Ha isruse shapir dami, but maybe they are allowed to enter erusin. So again, we said before that Rabbi Yossi holds Nesua Asura Li'ares. But here we say that it would seem that a Nesua can't enter Nesuin, but maybe she can enter Erusin, Amar Rava. So Rava is now going to once again amend the language of Rabbi Yossi to fit the opinion we apparently want him to have. Amar Rava, Tarit Zve'emahachi, resolve the brisa and rewrite it. Rabbi Yossi Omer, clearly, 
Kol Arusos Gerushos Yinasu. Any Arusa who was divorced from her Arus may remarry immediately. So with the exception of an Almana, she needs to wait 30 days. But a Nesua, a woman coming out of a full Nesuin, may not get engaged, may not enter Arisen for the reason that, reason that Rashi cited until they wait a full 30 days. Now, we have a, a very obvious Kasha on this interpretation of the Brisa and of the Mishnah. Because again, Rabbi Yossi says that he's referring to yes. an Arusa Grusha. Right. What's the problem with that? It's all by Grusha. It's Bingo. The evil. <laughs> what are you talking about? An Amana from an from an from an Arusin. What availus is there? Mm-hmm. We have a specific teaching from Rabbi Chia Barami. Ishto Arusa lo onain. So if his wife was only an Arusa and they never consummated and never they never had full nesuin, he doesn't have to be. He's not an onain. Velo mitami la. If he's a kohen, he should not be tummy for her. The chen he lo onenes velo mitami lo mitama lo. And she's not an onenes and she does not. This does not mean literally she not, cannot become tummy to him because. A, a, a woman who is a Bas Kohen or an Ashes Kohen has no none of these Isuri. All it means is just parallel language to the first statement of Rabbi Chia Barami. It just means she doesn't have to deal with his uh, with his funeral. Mesa Eno Yorsha. If she dies, the, the the connection, the marriage is not strong enough legally for him to inherit her. Mesa who go Ksuvasa. But she does get his Ksuva uh, if he passes away because they're at the very least. It was given already, and, and she does have a receipt. Ella, so how can it be that Rabbi Yossi is talking about a case of Arusa Grusha? Can't be. So at this point in the Gemara, right now, we just toss the entire Mahalach of an Arusa Grusha from Rabbi Yossi. Right. So where are we now? Now we're back to the Kasha. Why does an Almana have to wait 30 days? Right. And this returns the power of the Kalvachomer to its original place. So once again, what is Rabbi Yossi talking about? Why do we need an almana to wait 30 days? Uh, uh, an almana to wait 30 days. An ela tanoihi. But rather, Rabbi Yossi's opinion is rooted in a machlokis tanoihi. From Rosh Chodesh Av until Tisha B'Av, everybody reduces their business milisa and milita. From the, all the buying and selling, we live nos toa, and from building and planting, umila ares umilisa, and from Erusin and from Nisuin. So we see her explicitly an Isser in all of Chodesh Av to get engaged. Shabbos Shechal Tishaba Besocha, and the Shua Shechalbo is even more Chamur. Also, the Sapir Ulachabis, you're not allowed to uh, get a haircut and you're not allowed to do laundry. And some say that the entire month, and this is, uh, we hold a little bit closer to this, right? That you're not allowed to do laundry and you're not allowed to get a haircut. Maski of Ashi. So it would seem from there that um, we don't have to worry about a Kalvachomer anymore. This slugs the Kalvachomer. Right. So Rabbi Yossi can say, I hold like that, Brysa. So your Kalvachomer doesn't bother me a bit right. because you're telling me that when she's allowed to do laundry, she can do Averson. But now all of that is Asr, which means she needs to wait 30 days because he clearly holds like this, Brysa. Maski flow Ravashi. So now on that new Mahalach and Rabbi Yossi, Ravashi asks the following question. Why are you saying that in this limud of Rabbi Chia Barami? Why do you think that when he says Arisen, he means literally the transaction of Arisen? Maybe it's just the Suda that he's, that you're, that he's talking about. But to do Arisen, maybe that's Mutter. Because again, it's not a Simcha. Ihachi says says the Gemara. Well, if that's your limud, that really you're only talking about um, suda. the suda and Erisin is really mutter. Ihachi milisa. Well, then what about the adjacent phrase in Rabbi Rabbi Chia Bar Ami's teaching? Marriage. Lina se nami. So maybe by marriage too. Let me abit sudas nesu and huda asr halisa shop your dummy. And then may, so maybe marriage is mutter too. It's just the suda you can't do, implying of mm-hmm. course Erisin is asr. Because they have to be parallel. Right. So of course, if Nesuin's Aser, Arison's Aser. So once again, Rabbi Yossi, how can you hold that Arison is Aser within the 30 days of Avelis for this woman? Hachi Hashta. 
says the Gemara, how can you compare the two? Because by Nisuin, even without a Suda, there's still a Simchas Nisuin. Right. What Simcha is there? So once again, this question against Rabbi Yossi still stands. Finally, here's the answer. Ela Amar of Ashi, shiny Avelus Chadasha Me Avelus Yeshana, an older Avelus Dehainu, the Avelus that we have for the Beis Hamikdash, She Yibana Bimher Biyamenu. That's a very very old Avelus, and it's just less chamor than a new Avelus when somebody actually loses a family member. The shiny Avelus to Rabim Me Avelus to Yachid, and the Avelus of a Rabim, which is a communal Avelus that we have between uh, in the three weeks and especially from Rosh Chodesh Av and even more especially Shur Shechalbo is, is less strict than Avelus to Yachid. And the end of the story is we're machmir on her. We're machmir on Avelus to Yachid because she is mourning the loss of her first husband. Okay, Mishnah, bottom of Mem Gimel Amud Beis. We're going to get to the uh, two dots about a quarter of the way down and then Dalar Amud Aleph. Arba Achin Nesuin Arba Nashin. What if you have four brothers who were married to four women who were unrelated to one another, umesu, and they died. If the oldest surviving brother among them wants to be miyavim, all of these four wives. Uh, he died. Okay, uh, yeah, hold on. We're gonna get to that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes, yeah. it's a, it's a very, it's a. It's an obvious, it's an obviously problematic uh, opening to the Mishnah. Uh, me, uh, I was just beyond. A guy who was married to two women, and he dies. Okay. The, uh, now, this is a very standard, easy, right, simple a case of evil. Already, yeah. We've learned this already. Now, we had all the cases with all the sisters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forget that. Very that's, easy case. Basic case. One dude married to two unrelated women. If you're Meyavim or, 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 or Machlitz, one of them, boom, the other one goes free. Top of Mendala and Aleph. What if one of those wives was formerly a Grusha? She's usher to the Kahuna. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a Kshira because this is her first marriage, but now she's a widow. If he chooses to do Chalitza for one of them, he should be Cholitz, the one who's already Pasol, to not ruin the life of the one who's Kshira. Let her stay Kasher. And if he's going to do Yibum, he should be Miyavim, the one who is kosher to a Kohen. Gemara asks the obvious question that was Nizra Kami Piachabura, Arba Achin Salkadaita. How can it possibly be that if you have four brothers and all four of them died, there's still a Yibum left? There's nobody left. Arba yeah. Big family, four of the brothers were married, which means there was at least one other one. We say Harishuz Biyado. He is allowed to go ahead and marry all four of these women. The Shavkile. <laughs> Gamar says, you're leaving this guy to support four wives? Why, why do we make him do that, Rashi? How's he going to support four wives? And to strengthen the question, the the elders of the town call to him, to this Yavam. So they call over him directly. They don't even send their own messengers. They, they talk to him by themselves, love, and they speak with him and they give him advice. They give him advice that is appropriate for him in a situation like this. Let's say the Yavam is a child and the Yavama or the Zakuka Yavam is older. What if he's old and she's young? You're an old man. What do you want with this young girl? Malacha itzel zikena. You're a you're a young guy. What do you want with this older woman? Klach itzel shekamosha. Go and pick the yavama that is right for you. The altasim katata vevesacha. And don't walk into a situation where it's going to be immediately difficult for everybody. You're bringing a bunch of women who are not appropriate for you. What are you doing? Don't bring difficulty into your home. And she says the gemara lot zricha de efsherle. We're talking about a case where he's able to support them. Yeah, what? So then what what what's the limit with four? Why why four? Why not ten? Afilutuvanami, even more than four, the Mishnah should should have talked about. More than four. Eight Tova Kamash The Mishnah is simply giving us good advice. 
Arba in. Four works. Tve lo. Why? Rashi explains the uh, the Zaman Ona, the, the, the time for Tashmish for a Kamel Chacham is Friday night. There, how many Friday nights are there in a week? One. One. <laughs> Having a maximum of four wives would allow each of the wives to have her own private time with the husband once per month. Okay, Adkan, tomorrow we'll pick up Daf Mem Dalid by these two dots. And uh, we've got a big Amud coming up on Mem Hey Amud Aleph and another one on Mem Vav Amud Aleph. So we're going to try and mute Hashem to get a little bit further into Mem Hey tomorrow because the Yantefs get coming and it gets harder to. Uh, to figure out schedules and, and prep time. So, Ad Kanya Shukla have a wonderful day.